Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a <clears throat> brief look at geometric optics, which would be an application of reflection and refraction applied to mirrors and lenses. Let's review the law of reflection so that we can begin to apply this. If you recall, the law of reflection states that the reflected, ring, reflected angle is always equal to the incident angle. Raw law reflection states that theta 1, the incident angle, equals theta r, the reflected angle. And we're going to apply this as we talk about uh, mirrors that are either flat or curved. So to converge means to spread apart. We need this vocabulary to uh, be useful, to diverge. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, to diverge means to spread apart. To converge means to come together. Now, the three type of mirrors we'll be studying are the plane mirror, which is your flat surface mirror. You're looking at it from the side. Your concave mirror and your convex mirror. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the way it works is every time you take an object, every time you take a ray and bounce it off a mirror, every time the reflected ray bounces off the mirror, we trace back inside the mirror an imaginary line called a back ray. Okay, so for instance, if the black ray here coming in is the incident ray and the blue ray represents the reflected ray coming back, we will take a back ray extension of the reflected ray going right back into the mirror, just like that. Remember, you're looking at the mirror from the side view. This was an object in front of the mirror, like let's say you looking at yourself in front of the mirror. If we take this a step further, we have an incident ray going into the mirror, a reflected ray bouncing off the mirror, and a back ray extension of that reflected ray going back inside the mirror. Now, <clears throat> images, this is going to be a common theme for mirrors and lenses. Images are produced when rays intersect. So, for instance, you see these two back rays are intersecting. It's forming an image on the other side of the mirror. This turns out to be what's called a virtual image. We'll talk about that shortly. Now, concave mirrors are named as such that if you have a spherical mirror that would complete a, a sphere shape, you have a center of curvature, and you have a point at which all rays focus in at one point called the focal point. And you can see the focal point is roughly halfway to the center of curvature. Okay. In fact, we're going to say that it's halfway to the center of curvature. So a couple of things to note in how this works with law of reflection. These are considered normals. So if this is, if this is a tangent line to the surface, here's a tangent line to the surface, Here's a tangent line to the surface. Those dotted lines uh, represent, uh, not normals, they represent back rays. So the first thing we have is we have to set up a normal. So here's the surface, like this. Here's the normal. Something like that. The normal would be straight this way, and in this case, 
the normal would be something in that direction. And so the way it works, you can see the normal continues off on the other side. Well, law of reflection states that the incident angle equals the reflected angle. And you can see law of reflection take hold even in a spherical mirror. Law of incident angle equals reflected angle. Okay. <clears throat> um, the point at which they all come together, that's known as the focal point. Notice how a focal point is in front of a concave mirror. And the easiest way to remember, the easiest way I remember a concave mirror is that it's it's kind of like a mirror that's caving in around a person, right? If that person were right here, it's caving in around you. A convex mirror by opposition is something that's bending away from you, okay? So you can see this would be, there's the normal, there's a the normal, there's a the normal, and you can see law of reflection is applying to a convex mirror as well. But you'll notice it's the back rays. It's the back rays that are converging for a uh, convex mirror. And the focal point is inside the mirror. For a concave mirror, the focal point is in front of the mirror. Behind the mirror, the, uh, the uh, focal point for a convex mirror is inside the mirror. To produce an image, we need to produce a diagram of all the rays and how they interact with the surface. These are called the ray diagram rules, or the rules for ray diagrams. Here's how they go. The first ray goes parallel to the principal axis and then reflects through the focal point. Well, that could be like this. The principal axis is an imaginary line that bisects the mirror. So let's say we put a concave mirror, whoops, a concave mirror here. That would make the center of curvature here and the focal point right here. Little f abbreviates the focal point. Again, this right here is referred to as the principal axis, and it bisects the mirror. So the first ray, say we have an object that's way over here. Objects are going to be represented by upright arrows. The object could be just something, anything in front of the mirror. The incident ray goes parallel to the principal axis and reflects, right, or tries to reflect in the case of a convex mirror, through the focal point. So let's see how that works. It reflects through the focal point, so it'd be downward like this. And we get this back ray extension, just like that. The second ray, according to the rule, goes or tries to go through the focal point and reflects parallel. In other words, the first and second ray are converses of each other. They're flipped statements. So the second ray tries to go or does go through the focal point and reflects parallel to the principal axis. Again, we draw a back ray. We always draw a back ray from the reflected ray. You'll now images are always formed when rays intersect. In the previous example, it was back rays that intersect to form the virtual image behind the mirror. Well, here you can see it's the two blue reflected rays that are forming the image right there. And I draw a nice little upside down arrow. From the principal axis to the point of intersection. That would be the location of the image formed by intersecting rays in front of a concave mirror. <clears throat> well, the images are going to be slightly different depending on where this object is. So if we move this object closer to the focal point and even inside the focal point, you're going to get a different result as far as 
the way the image is formed. You're going to do a lab that helps you explore all the different possibilities that come. Now, with a convex mirror, the same thing works. The only difference is the mirror bends away from you and the focal point is on the far side. Here's the curvature, center of curvature, focal point is halfway. So there's the focal point. Again, the rules state, if we have an object that's lay over here, I'll put the object closer. Say the object is right here. The first ray goes parallel to the principal axis. Now this time, the reflected ray does not go down through the focal point because light rays don't go into a mirror. They reflect off the mirror, so, but it's gonna reflect up at an angle that's opposite away from the focal point. That way the back ray can be traced right back through the focal point. So it's still rule one. It's still going uh, parallel to the principal axis and then ref re uh, reflecting to the focal point, but it's the back ray that goes to the focal point, not the reflected ray. The second ray really tries to go through the focal point, but it doesn't quite make it. So we stop right at the mirror and we reflect it parallel to the principal axis like this. And the back ray extension goes straight into the mirror like this. And you can see it's where the back rays meet. We're forming a very tiny virtual image inside the mirror. We're going to get into image characteristics later on. So in our, your lab, you're going to explore all the different possibilities that the ray diagrams help you do, okay, that help you come up with. Now, one thing to note, there is a third ray. I call it the ray of last resort. And what it does is it passes through the center of curvature reflecting back on itself. So if this is your mirror, and this is your principal axis, and let's say that's your focal point, center of curvature is about right there, and let's say the, folk, the object is placed over here. Uh, we could go first ray into the mirror, reflects through the focal point, like this, and we have our back ray extension. That could be our first ray, ray one. Let's say we don't do ray two. Let's say we skip to do ray three. Well, ray three goes right through the center of curvature, just like this, but then it reflects right back on itself, like this. Okay, and you can see the, um, the image would form where the two blue rays are meeting. So you can use the first and second ray if the second ray is applicable. Always use the first ray, but you're going to choose whether it's the second or third ray that gets used. Okay, why is this important? Because, ladies and gentlemen, only two intersecting rays are needed in order to form an image. Okay, now, what about an image summary? Let's take a look. When two reflecting rays intersect, a real image is formed. When two back rays intersect, a virtual image is formed. Something we should note, real images form in front of mirrors and are always inverted. That means they're upside down. Back rays. When two back rays intersect, you form a virtual image. Well, by contrast, virtual images form behind the mirror, 
upright. They're always right side up. They're always upright. Okay. Moving on to lenses. There are two types of lenses that you're going to be working with. One of them is called a biconcave lens, otherwise known as a converging lens. And that's because the rays of light would go through and converge to a far side focal point. But here's the interesting part about lenses. You could pass light this way too and it would converge to this far side focal point. That means lenses have two focal points, one on either side, assuming the curvature is exactly the same. This, sorry, I have this backwards. Uh, this is known as a biconvex lens because it's convex on this side and convex on this side. This is known as a biconcave lens. Biconvex lens converge the light. Biconcave lenses diverge the light. These are known as diverging lenses. And that's because light would pass through as parallel rays and it would spread apart like that. And it would be the back ray that you could trace through a focal point. And that's true on both sides. You'd have a focal point on both sides because light can pass through a lens on both sides. The diagrams are basically the same. The only difference is we change the word reflect to refract, and we have two focal points instead of one. That's really the main difference. The third ray, instead of reflecting back through the center of curvature, you pass it through the center of the lens, and it gets unrefracted. Let's take a look at a possible ray diagram. So we take a lens and we put it here. This would be an example of a converging lens. You put the focal point on either side. Okay, focal point one, focal point two. You don't need to number them. Just understand you have one focal point, like a near side focal point and a far side focal point. And let's take the object and we'll put it here. Well, the first rule says we go parallel to the principal axis and we refract through a focal point, right? It's very similar to the mirror but we're refracting instead of reflecting. So we go through, parallel. Now remember, this is a converging lens, so light wants to converge through focal points. So the light is going to refract downward through that far side focal point like this. Now is where we draw an extension back from the refracting ray, not the reflecting ray, because lenses don't reflect, they refract. Similar idea, but we're changing the verbiage. The second ray goes through the other unused focal point, the near side focal point, and once it gets to the lens, it refracts parallel, just like this. The back ray, you can see the two back rays are diverging. You can see the two blue rays, the two refracting rays, converged, forming a real inverted image on the other side of the lens. Right? That's one example of a possible ray diagram. In your lab, you're going to encounter uh, many different possibilities that you could do. Lastly, we have an equation that helps us quantify all of these values. F is the variable used for the focal length. SO is the object distance. S stands for distance. O is object. S stands for distance. I is image. So SO is object distance. SI is image distance. A couple other variables we should know. HO would be object height. HI would be image height. M is the magnification. So what are some of these rules that we should... Uh, should know how to use. One, converging lenses and mirrors are always positive. Okay, what this means is the focal length for a converging mirror is always positive. Okay, for diverging lenses and mirrors, focal lengths are negative. Objects are always positive 
they're always in front of the mirror. For the image distance, if you have reflecting rays creating the image, the image distance will be positive. If back rays created the image behind the mirror or in front of the lens, your image distance will be negative. Okay, objects, uh, the object height will always be positive because the object will always be upright in front of the lens or mirror. Now, if the image height is positive, that means the image is upright. If the image is inverted or upside down, it means the image height is negative. And lastly, magnification is the ratio of image to object characteristics. It essentially means um, something that is seen or viewed as larger or smaller. So the necessary formula we need for the mirror lens equation is 1 over the focal length equals 1 over SO plus 1 over SI. The equation for magnification, there's actually two of them. Magnification is the ratio of the image height to the object height, the image uh, distance to the object distance, or it's the ratio of the image height to the object height. And you can just set these equal to each other. That actually makes it really easy to solve problems. Image height to object height is equal to negative image distance to object distance. This is the one that I typically work with. But if you're, say you're only given values of distance, then we would find magnification this way. Keeping in mind, um, magnification is telling you how many times larger or smaller. So if the number is greater than one, you have a larger magnification. Okay, so a magnification of two, for instance, means the object is two times larger. If you see a magnification of negative two, it's two times larger, but inverted upside down. If you saw something that was a magnification of 0.5, that means it's smaller, it's half as large, and it's upright.